I was just wondering about your provincial traffic at 447. That's minus, 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 minus that's traffic. provincial minus traffic. Well, that's provincial minus, okay. Yeah. And then the other one for the uh, intoxication. Oh, is, the number of prisoners you're talking about themselves? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, well, right now, uh, to date for the second quarter, uh, we would have 404. Three, but that's not counting what we do for blood product uh, service. We have probably over 1,100 prisoners thus far uh, in our cells that we had, had to deal with mm -hmm. through the, up to the second quarter. Okay. So. But the 404 are the ones that you see actually capture, uh, which captures what we caught in carts in an area, area. And the rest are blood product police services. Okay. Dennis? How many of those are repeat guys? Yeah. I would say 85% uh, are repeats. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. so I'll be, I would say that's a good period. Yeah. yeah. Corporal Brown, <clears throat> how are we doing at uh, moving the vagrancy and the panhandling off the streets? Well, um, between uh, uh, Horton, Weasel Bat, and us, we've been doing a fair amount of, or had been anyways, throughout the summer months to keep things moving there. Uh, we've uh, <coughs> done or spent due diligence in regards to uh, our foot patrols. Uh, we have a foot patrol list and encourage our members to uh, do foot patrols. But uh, Horton was very good for us. Uh, he used our phones quite a bit to call us and let us know that uh, we're problems maybe and he was good in giving us uh, service delivery as well uh, accompanying us to the cells at times uh, with these individuals to bring their temperament down a bit that may not be very happy with us but uh, for most part nothing too much out of whack I think it's a uh, due to the dynamics of our our area it's going to be an ongoing problem because we suffer from a lot of uh, substance abuse uh, within the town and outside the town. Now, are these individuals from our area? Or are they moving in from other areas, like northern areas? Most, most of the individuals that we deal with are, uh, as I mentioned, repetitive. They are from our area. Uh, but if you want to call our area Moses Lake, it, a lot of them are from that area too, as well as from within the community itself. Um, having said that, uh, I wanted to mention about our Citizens on Patrol group. Uh, prior to Halloween, and we had a good Halloween, we had a meeting uh, and we had over 20 people attend our Citizens on Patrol groups. We have people that really express an interest, uh, new blood is in there. Uh, new enthusiasm, uh, and we enjoy the uh, input that we're getting from these citizens uh, who are on patrol with us uh, at various times throughout the week. Uh, there are a number of incidents that happen actually that involve the citizens on patrol to, to help members uh, either uh, capture, arrest, uh, or assist in the arrest of, of individuals that have caused our members some some problems uh, for the community. So I just want to say kudos to Richard Bangri and who is the president and Richard Anderson who's uh, rallied the troops, instilled enthusiasm and Constable Frazier is the liaison person who uh, works between our office and the citizens on patrol to make things work and have a good understanding. How do we make things good easier for them when they're on their patrols? Uh, it's a, one of the most uh, success groups that we have right now in helping us to deal with uh, property crimes, as you saw there, and uh, keeping uh, people who are perhaps under the influence of alcohol or drugs uh, at, at bay. Everything. So we're pleased with the citizens on the road and for the services that they've given us. Thank you. Corporal Brown, uh, let's go back a little bit, and thank you so much for that. Uh, report on COP helping you at this time, especially being so short of staff. 
and I really appreciate all what you do with your detachment. Thank you. It must not be easy it's, it's not. to look after the town yeah. with yeah. three. Well, and it's not just show. the town, it's the county, and there's, uh, there's right. Hill Spring, Glenwood, and all in between there, so we try to be all. It's, as much as we try to be everywhere at once, uh, we just can't, but we, we do our best. Yeah. Thank you. Now, you were mentioning uh, that figure, 447, in provincial minus traffic for the second quarter. Yeah, that would a be huge jump. Yeah. So it involved, according to your list, ch child welfare art, coroner's art, gaming, liquor art, mental health, trespasses, false alarm, national survey code, that's an interesting one, prisoner health, assistance to general public. Can you give us a little bit of a sense of what happened there? Which category was the one that created such a bulge? In regards to, uh, you mean for... Provincial minus traffic. Yeah. Provincial minus it's traffic. Uh, it's quite a huge jump from 73 the quarter before to 447. Okay. Uh, again, what's happening there, and that is a pretty big jump there, is that we have not been calculating how many prisoners that we put in our cells and so the numbers that you see right there is what actually we are now entering into our database. So before we okay. used to put, when we brought people in from the blood tribe reserve, they right. just went in and there was no documentation of who, who was in our cells. Okay. So what happened there, what's causing that to bump up was um, uh, that we, what we call a C13. It's a, an entrance, uh, a form that when they come into our desk, they fill out this form called a C13. That C13 gets now downloaded into our data, which is what we call pros uh, reports, and, and that's now causing that number to bump up okay. uh, out of what appeared to be whack. Before we weren't we weren't given account of that. Okay. Now we have been. All right. But may I may say this, <laughs> as you are probably aware, other than the fact that we're missing a detachment commander and two other members. Um, we're also missing a, 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 a staff member, or not a staff member, but a, a, a public service member. And we had a member who was hired in May and he quit in September. So he's gone back to his form. So now we're in the process of uh, hiring a, another a public servant. But that public servant was used he was the guy that got these numbers up because I asked him to, because again, we weren't given any credit for the time that we spent dealing with these guys in the cells. And sometimes these people in cells, uh, they become um, hospitalized, whether it's through seizure or just bringing self-affliction on themselves. So in order for us to get some credit for it, I had him enter this data into our pros, and that's why you get those numbers are bigger as they are. But so, now that we don't have the position there anymore, those numbers will jump like get back, back down again because we just don't have the, the girl right. that's there now. She just can't get to that. Right Thank you so much. Okay. I truly appreciate all what you do for our town. Thank you. And to keep it a safe place. And please pass our, our congratulations to your detachment. Thank you You're very so short-handed. It must be very difficult. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you. We need to go back to three, to the addition and adoption of the agenda. I need a motion to adopt the agenda. Yeah, Councillor Bangry. Uh, any questions regarding the agenda? Any additions? No, we're good. So say none, we'll vote. All in favor? Thank you. So we shall proceed uh, to five. Regular council meeting, October 29th, 2013. Um, Marion, there were some changes that were going to be made. It, yes, Your Honor. Um, under the first page, the Christmas social, it should read that the Christmas social will be held at the Cardston Legion on the first or second Wednesday of December. Okay. And there's one other correction on the last page. 
the Old Man River Regional Services Commission uh, session. It should read that we will, there's a number of counselors who will attend the session on January 23rd, 2014. 2000. Here, right here. Okay, so we need to pass a motion to approve the amended uh, minutes of the regular meeting. No, uh, okay, Councillor and move to approve the amended uh, minutes of the regular council meeting. All in favor? Thank you. Now let's go to the organizational meeting, October the 29th. Here again, I believe there was an amendment to be made. Yes, there's one correction on page two um, under the community awareness. Mayor Cronin will be in attendance throughout the evening and each councillor will take a minimum half hour shift each. So remove the S on councillor. Okay. So we need a motion to approve. Councillor uh, Pivoy will uh, approve the minutes as amended for the organizational meeting of October 29. All in favor? Thank you. All right, we need to go to business arising. The first item is on the 6A, the AUMA travel around arrangements and itinerary. So here we need to discuss carpooling. I will be carpooling with Marion. Is anybody else carpooling? I need to take my own vehicle. Okay. Okay. How, how will you go? Well, I need, to, I need to take my vehicle. I need to come back to us. Okay. Nice. We'll be carpooling with you then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, can, can I just, sorry, just to clarify, do I need to cancel your hotel room for Thursday night? No, no, I'll be back. Oh, I'll just, I'm just going to go down. He's going to left. Okay, so you're okay. going to go to the meeting and come back. Yeah. All right. Uh, with that, um, my wife will not be joining us on Wednesday night. Okay. Um, if you have another person you would like to bring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. Although <laughs> <laughs> you might have friends or family in Calgary. Oh, I'm taking my dog. What color is your red face? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll give my, my cousin a call. The thing is, and the reason I say that, the tickets are already purchased, right? Okay. So uh, you're welcome to bring another guest with you. All right, so you want me to specify it who it has to be. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So in that case, there is only uh, okay. ourselves coupling together. Same. So, so the information is in your background, or um, I will be paying for the hotel rooms. Yeah. You may have to leave your credit card if you get there before I do, what but I'll replace it with mine. Not sure. What time do you plan on being up there? Uh, depends what time we get out at the meetings get here, meetings here right? on Tuesday. Yeah. We'll probably plan to leave right after the meeting with um, the That's land the, use, or is, the, is the, the old South old Saskatchewan yeah. 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 meeting, yeah. so 3 o'clock-ish, yeah. so we can hit rush hour in Calgary. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, speaking about AUMA, you understand that you will receive your packet at AUMA. Your different sessions have not been picked for you. So you will be able to pick what you would like. And we could have a little bit, when we see each other, see, make sure that we cover all the sessions as much as possible. Okay, so we have been registered. The reason being that there's always space in all the rooms. They never stop anyone from coming in the rooms. It always works. The rooms are big. So it well, always worked. Well. Just for clarification, when we registered you, we had to put some session in. Yeah, right. And so we just chose the same session for everyone just to simplify it. Um, but you're not obligated to attend that session. And that works well. We've done it in the past like that with no difficulty. In the morning at breakfast, we normally say, well, 
who is going here, who is going there, and we try to kind of make sure we cover it. It, it would be area. good for us next year if you can review the package ahead of time and let us know which sessions you'd like to be registered because it gives them a better sense of how many people are going to be in each session. Right. Now, there is another question that we need to ask. At the end of the AUMA, there is always that uh, time where we vote on a different resolution. So, just give me a sense, how many of you, having read the resolutions, feel that they want to talk uh, publicly about those resolutions on Edema? Mm -hmm. What would you like well, to there, do? There was, there was one of the resolutions, and I, I didn't bring that with me tonight, but it had to do with uh, the, the power for coal, and, and anyway, uh, in, in, in the introduction of the resolution, they uh, talked about all the scientists agree that human people cause the causing recent global warming, and I, uh, I have a, a, an article that, that that really doesn't support that at all. That, that many scientists, uh, well, e even the IPCC, the, the you know the United Nations, uh, they they know that the climate uh, world climate hasn't changed in the last 16 years. There has been no global warming in the last 16 years, and so. Uh, I feel like I might want to stand up and just make a point there on that resolution. Not that I'm necessarily against the, the outcome of the resolution, but uh, I feel like we can't perpetuate uh, uh, false science, <laughs> you know, bad science. Okay, so how does Council feel about that? Global warming has been happening for Don't centuries. we have to declare whether you're for or against that? Uh, yes, yeah, you have to declare yeah, if yeah. you for well, or I'll, against. I'll, 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 I'll speak against it, but in, 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 in a kind of a couched way. Because <laughs> uh, I think, you know, we, we, we do need to look at uh, trying to be clean in our energy and uh, things like that. But, uh, okay, <laughs> so the point is here, does your voice represent your voice or does it represent council voice? Well, we also need to make sure that AUMA knows that we're going to have a, a no, it's from the floor. speaker to her. It's from the floor. It's usually, from the floor. Usually they, sometimes it is. Sometimes they, they just, they they just set up the microphones and, and people go up to the microphone. Yeah. See, in, in past years, nobody's ever asked us. We've, sometimes I've come up and said something, but uh, I appreciate you know that we talk about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's just to, to make sure who are we representing when we talk in public. And we state our name, and we state our position. Who are we representing? Mayor Crowley, yes, I can speak to that. When we when we speak from the council's point of view, I think that you should be addressing the, the situation as our mayor. Thank you. You know, uh, that's what the communication policy says, right? Right. And so, if Councillor Creed has, you know, something against that that resolution, then I think you should meet with Councillor Creed before we go up there and talk about it with the, with the council, and make sure that that's our feelings. And then I think that you should be speaking for the council on behalf of our community. Is just a question. Is it not appropriate for a individual counselor to speak on behalf of a no. demographic that uh, believes the same thing? Not according to the communication policy. No, I just mean at this at this convention, not no. now. Still communications from, from from this council. That's why I. That's this is why I I'm bringing. This yeah. is why I'm bringing it up. Sure. We have to decide what we feel is appropriate in order to represent our town, because that's who we represent when we are at the UMA. It's our town's position. So, on that one, how does, uh, the, uh, how does uh, uh, Council feel on that particular item? Uh, Councillor Bandry, you... I, I, I agree with Councillor Creed in the, in the fact that, hey, Global warming has been going on for a million years because what happened to the dinosaur age? Mm 
and I mean to blame it all on the on the uh, you know, on the human beings. It's, it's yeah. ridiculous. Okay, so let's let's carry on, yeah. Councillor Peabody. What's your position? Uh, I don't have a problem with him representing us in that way. Okay, I don't either. I, I've never been in, in agreement with the fact that that we can have an eagle that big to think that you know that our puny existence here on Earth has that effect on on the global warming. Councillor Edmund. The industry. I have a little problem with it. Okay. Express it. Well, there's no firm facts yeah. on global warming one way or the other. Yeah. And there's multiple reports out there saying it's happening. There's multiple reports out there saying it's not. So for us to say we believe it's all hogwash. <laughs> well, that, that's why I'd like to, to, to address it because because there is, you know, the, when they they the way they re written it, they repeat it like everybody agrees with it, yeah. and, and I do want to make the point that everybody does not agree with it. So yeah, right. that's does that uh, help? <laughs> well, and I got the impression that's what he wanted to say is that there is no clear science on either side. So yeah, I'm thinking that he's going to represent it in that way that there's no. But he's science. representing us at that point because they ask where you're from and your name. Right, right. right. So. And then to say that there's no clear science on either side of that. Yeah. At least no, no agreement. Yeah. No agree, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Councillor Baptist, what's your opinion? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not opposed to it. Uh, I, I agree with what's been said here. There is no clear science on the one side or the other. Um, I just question what the value is for us to make it an issue. I don't have a problem with Bill standing up to say, for him personally, that's where it's at. I don't know that as a council we want to go forward and be pushing that as an agenda. That's the only mm -hmm. only question I would have that way. If I may, uh, would your intention be to just get that stricken from, like to amend their proposed I mean, their proposal could could be could be that we just it's strictly just saying, hey, anybody in the future who tries to bring this up, Cardston is going to be watching the yeah. wording like this. And one of one of the reasons is, is it because it becomes a kind of accepted politically, and and it's not based on good science, and so. You know, I really have a problem with this, you know, like this carbon capture and, and carbon credits and things like that. Uh, it, it, uh, it's based on <laughs> political, you know, some, you know, a political scheme, <laughs> you know, rather than really hard science. If I may have okay. one more question. Is your worry that it might, if, if it goes unchecked, it might creep into more things in the future? Well, that's, that's, yeah, that's my concern okay. is it, you know, becomes accepted and, and, and it's, like I said, not based on really good Again, <laughs> to Councilman Barfus, when you stand up at that at that time, they ask you your name and where you're from, and so you're basically representing the council, and that's that's a concern. Mm -hmm. And whether our mayor should be doing that or whether a councilor should be doing that. Is there a policy? I don't, I don't think, think there's a problem no. with the councilor because yeah. there are councilors mm -hmm. that are oh yes, yeah, that, that can be assigned. But the, but the well, concept that everybody's going to get is whoever addresses this issue, issue, it comes from this council. Essentially what we need to make sure is that first of all we are in agreement uh, about the decision that, I mean the premise that is given to us in that, in that resolution. And then we have to properly express our position to what is it that we're in opposition to? Is that to the broad, the broad brushing of the situation that is maybe not the wisest way to address the problem? If that is what it is, is that an amendment to the resolution that you're looking for? Maybe we could maybe do it in that manner. That be because if it's an, ad, an, an amendment to the resolution, actually, actually, then it can be voted upon in, in and a, passed or rejected, right? In a sense, though, uh, if, if I recall that resolution, that wasn't actually 
part of the resolution. It was it was a part of the background. It was part of the background. Is it? Find it in there. It was part of the background in the in the the background of the Could you read, read Is it in the wetlands policy statement? Uh, no, that? no. Uh, it, was, it was just, let me see if I can try. I'm just trying to find the resolution. It, it, was, it was in one of the Alberta resolutions, one of the, about the second yeah. or third one in. Oh, reducing greenhouse gas yes, that's yes. What's power generation? Yeah, that's yes. what's the one. So that is on page 63, Councillor. What's the resolution? In there? Uh, B10, 2013 B10. Yeah, yeah. Is it an addition <coughs> as a backgrounder? Pardon? Is it an addition as a backgrounder? Well, it says whereas electricity use is a significant tr contributor to the emission of greenhouse gases. And I'm sorry, I'm just. Well, energy, I'm trying to determine what system. resolution we're even discussing here. Yeah, it is. It, that is the resolution. So, what was the background there? And, on it? Can and, you okay, uh, what was? Let's see. Uh, let me see. Oh, science, science. Yeah, it was. It was put in, in in the second dot on the, on the background. Says scientists now agree that human activity is most likely responsible for recent temperature increases. Um, you know, that, that was that was what I kind of took exception to because. In a sense, where temperature increases in in the the, the research, there, there have been no global increases in temperature over 16 years. <laughs> yeah. Just to note, though, they have noted the reference material for that, uh -huh. and it comes from Environment Alberta Environment. What is climate change? Right. Yeah. That's where they retrieve that information. Right. I understand, and, so and, and, and it probably comes from the IPCC, uh, which that's the international. Okay. So. Climate okay, we need to kind of move on. Anyway. So, what do we want to do with this one? We can. Actually, I really think the resolution, the re resolution is fine. Mm -hmm. It's maybe the wording inside well, the background that that might not be hundred yeah. percent what we believe in. Yeah. But the resolution is fine, so it won't change the outcome of the resolution. No, I'm, I'm not really right? opposed to the resolution. Yeah, okay. So maybe we should leave it alone okay. at this point. We'll just, we'll, I'll just, we'll just... Uh, yeah. I think if it doesn't change the resolution, okay. Okay. it's not going to do anything. Yeah, yeah, just for clarification, because at the resolution session, they're going to ask you to speak for or, or against. against. Yes. Resolution, so yeah. you really have to have a position either for or against. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. The total Which resolution. Yeah, right. yeah. So yeah. It ha it's a resolution in itself. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mayor Cronin, at this time then, maybe we should look at our communications policy and ensure that as counselors that we are participating in this in the proper fashion. When we do a, 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 a release or something like that, it needs to go through council, and I and I strongly feel personally that it needs to be done by you. The okay, mayor. so <coughs> we will address that under council uh, communication under the 7B in Thank a little you. while, okay? So here is the next point. Let's go to 6B. The letter to Minister Griffiths. I know uh, that is something that Councillor Creed uh, wanted uh, Mayor and Council to have an answer to that Bill 28. I do not know if you received today in your email what Marion sent us from AUMA. So you, you, if you haven't seen it, I'm going to maybe take a minute or two to read you the position of AUMA, and uh, I want, I will just read an excerpt. It says, at a minister's task force meetings, AUMA has raised a number of questions and concerns relating to the purpose and scope of the work of growth management boards, mandatory participation rather than voluntary, the appointment of board members and chair selection by the minister, rather than the municipalities that are part of the Growth Management Board, the impact of the growth plan created by these boards on municipalities' plan, the need for a robust and meaningful appeal process inside the Growth Management Corporation, the removal of the section that criminalizes the proceedings against mayors and a number of administrative issues. 
So here is the answer from the minister that came out of that. We had a teleconference uh, of all the mayors regarding that issue. Minister Griffiths has been very attentive to hearing our, cons our concerns and suggestions for amendment to Bill 28. As he committed in a recent conference, that's a teleconference that was part of, called with mayors, the Act will be revised to clarify that it is intended to be used for voluntary truck growth board. And that came over and over and over. There were about uh, a half a dozen questions regarding that very issue. And a half a dozen times, he repeated himself that, indeed, it will be voluntary and profusely apologized that the intent was not to create something that would become that monster that will be uh, top down, but the intent was really to uh, legislate the uh, desire of those communities that wanted to work together to create a super board and give them a legislative framework. So that was really meant to start from the bottom up and not from the top down. But the way it read in the legislation, it could open at the door for yeah. misinterpretation in the future. So that will be addressed. And then uh, the AUMA say, he has also given AUMA and the other task force participants a verbal commitment to address the other concerns outlined above. So all of what we, I just read to you. We look forward to obtaining further details from the minister on specific changes that will be made and will be communicated, probably even at the UMA if they have it. So I think that covers all the grounds that you have in your letter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think your letter is almost out of timing now yeah. from the UMA. Yeah, no, that's fine. And, 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 the, and the, the administration, they, they drafted another letter, yeah. which, was, which was fine too. And, but you're saying maybe maybe we don't need that we, at this point now. At this point, I think What's they have addressed letter? all the, the points. If I may, yes. yeah, I, I still think that uh, based on, and this is just based on my conversation with uh, MLA Bickman, that uh, he requested from us that we join in, you know, declaring our, you know, position regarding Bill 28. So, I mean, he has requested of this council some kind of support in opposition to, um, and I think we, we do need to maybe check with him, make sure we're meeting his request sufficiently. Do we have to, do we have as a council to uh, fulfill the request? I, I don't believe we do, but okay, I that's out of my respect point, for his that's... request, we should check and see if... Well, I, I think we decide... We, we I, I, I'm still... I'm still suggesting we send that letter regardless whether we come to AUMA. That way we responded as a council with with our concerns and, and it's on record. Okay, how many of you are in favor of uh, moving forward? Can I just make a comment this? first? Sure, go ahead. I, I think the letter that you've written up here, uh, Mayor, kind of addresses those concerns in a lighter handed way. And, and, and I, I think this letter, I don't think there's any harm at all in this letter being sent. All right. I, I like it. Okay. I mean, you know, the letter that Bill yes. had written <laughs> needed to be addressed, right? It was a good letter, yeah. and it was a knee-jerk reaction for all of us because we had some concerns. But the, address, the, the concerns have been addressed, but I think this still gives him our concerns. Okay. Right? Councillor Edmonds, what's your feeling? I think we should send them. Okay. I think we should absolutely send them. All right. So I feel fine with that uh, decision. Do we so need a motion on uh, that? no, I don't think so. Motion. You want a motion? I'll okay. A motion that we so before you go, could you uh, give me some idea? I don't know what the letter was. I'm very getting really confused. Could, uh, could somebody uh, you want to give me your copy just then? What you're really getting into and uh, what the brain is okay. going away. <laughs> So I would like okay. you to give me okay. some idea because it's okay. difficult for me to figure okay. out what Mr. Barron, really you, what you're talking about. Mr. Barron, maybe administration can <laughs> provide what, you with What we can papers. do for you, Don, is we can provide you with the council package 
prior to the meeting so you'll be able to review all the documentation. So I'll give you a copy of this letter if Council's okay with that. Okay. So then you'll be able to review the letter and make comment. Yeah, as I say, I can. Yeah, maybe have I would, I would see that bill too so that he yeah, understands sure. what we're responding to. A yeah. copy of bill 28. Like, Okay, we will, we will see that uh, and I'll make, I'll make a motion that we, oh, we yeah. uh, send this letter to, a, uh, to the district. Okay, do you want a copy top. to AUMA? Yes. Okay. And CC so a copy. CC to AUMA, CC to... Uh, Mr. Bickman and also yeah. to uh, the Honorable. Um, that's how we have address. Okay, so uh, all in favor? Thank you. <coughs> All right. Request for decision. December meetings. We normally have two meetings in December. This year, the third meeting would fall the 24th, I believe, of December. So I would suggest that possibly we keep December the 3rd as our uh, Committee of the Whole and December the 10th as a regular uh, council meeting. Therefore, the only thing we would have to do is, uh, by way of motion, uh, dispense with December 24th meeting. And we will readjourn on uh, January the 7th. Absolutely. Uh, okay, so Councillor Pivor. December uh, 3rd and, and December what? 10th. 10th. Right. Uh, moves that we hold council of the whole on a 3rd of December, regular council meeting on a 10th, mm -hmm. and dispense with just yeah, simply yeah. cancel. If I might, the motion should just dispense with cancel the 24th, because the, the, the others are as scheduled. They're okay, always. so, Councillor Pivoy, your motion will be to, to dispense the 24th, mm -hmm. with meeting of the 24th. All right. Any questions? I do See think now? we should all think about each other though on that day. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, do all in favor? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. All right, let's go to council communication. Uh, Marion has given us given us the a copy of our policy just for your review. And uh, Councillor Balfour's you wanted to speak to that, I believe. Yeah, the, the thing that I was, that I was looking at is uh, during the campaign and, and, I, and for some time before it, I have been accumulating a, what in effect is an email database and through my participation with Facebook as well uh, in communicating with other people in the community. And I have not been doing that since the election simply because I didn't think it was appropriate for me to be sending something out that might be interpreted as council saying something. But at the same time I think it would be beneficial for us to put something into place as a council or as a town to be able to use the technology that's there to try to uh, okay. get some of that communication out. Okay, I appreciate you being careful on this item. I really also believe that many of us ran on a on a platform of transparency yeah. and trying to provide information to our constituents. Uh, we have to be careful, and in a way, we do it. It has to represent a position of council, exactly. not Absolutely. our position. In other words, uh, we could very well, as a council have a letter to uh, the citizen twice a month representing our council meeting and our way of looking at the way we do business. We could report mayor's letter that you would be approving and that, that you could put on your uh, And that was exactly what I was, what I was getting Is at. that something like that that could be useful to you? That, mayor's that was exactly what I was getting mayor's letter. Yeah. Yeah, approved by council. Sure. Yeah, of course. Uh, Mayor, we, we, the town already has Facebook, mm -hmm. or we, have we not? Mm -hmm. And we use it quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And we and have it Twitter could go through also, too. don't we? So. And it could go there too. So what, what I'm getting at is, is not just the content, 
but as using another way, Facebook page actually has been really effective for some things. And, right. And when you, if you sit down and talk to Jeff and Graham sometime, they'll tell you about how effective it's been on some of those things. Uh, but there's a lot of people who aren't on Facebook who do have email access. And so if we put it out there and began to build an email database where people could let us know that they would like to receive that, we could develop a mailing list that would get out to more people. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now that is a, a very interesting point because we could send a, a note through Facebook or through different ways to allow people to join a mailing list at a town where they could receive that uh, mayor's la a letter mm -hmm. uh, just a few days after we had. And, and that's what I'm getting at. For, for, for things that the, the town's done on their Facebook page where it's been an activity or an event, it's been able to carry on and, and that page continues to develop a lot of interest from it. If it's just a one-time thing, it doesn't seem to get as much attention coming back to it regularly, whereas if we could push that information out to people, rather than having them go to the Facebook page all the time to check it, an email goes out to them and it's pushed towards it and then they, they see it and have the option then of looking at it. Okay. They feel yeah. like they've been informed. Yeah. No, sir, our, our staff are very, very busy as it is. And I think a once a month thing like this would be tremendous, but it puts a lot of onus on our staff. Maybe a quarterly email. Mm. I don't know how if, 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 if I might, Richard, the, the, mm -hmm. the letters written here, it's a push of a button to send the email. Yeah. yeah. We don't it, it's, it's, not, it's not a big deal. Shouldn't, shouldn't, and shouldn't and that letter out, may it? Um, just for council's information, in the past we have had councils who have assigned a particular councillor to do a monthly letter. So it's not all left up to the mayor, and definitely not left up to administration. You're talking about a communication piece from council, mm -hmm. not from administration. So oh. that may take some burden off of the mayor if you were to assign a councillor once a month to develop that letter. Mm -hmm. And that, that's, that's where I'm getting at as far as the time that we're asking for. So you want one, one letter a month on email? Yeah, yeah I, I think that would be a great place to start. start. Okay. Okay. Well, so I, I think, and, and again, this is just from the campaign trail, what I've heard, what I, what I understand they want by the transparency idea. I think what they're interested in is just some key bullet points of what's been discussed with maybe a link to where they can go to learn more. So we say, hey, we discussed the garbage situation. They say, well, I didn't know there was an issue with the garbage situation. Where can I go to learn more? You give them a little link, they go and research it. Or, at that point, we could even have uh, time stamps from the video. We're like, well, if you want to go see that, if you're interested in that, that's time stamp, boom, on the video. Uh, and I think all they need is just bullets. And the impression I got was they'd love those the day after we meet. So we could say, hey, we, here's some of the main big items we discussed, bullet, 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 there's six of them, if you want more, and it, we don't have to take a position on it, we just say, here's the topic, and you can go see what we discussed in council, if you have an opinion, uh, we'll be discussing this again per, you know, two weeks from now, or a month from now. Is it appropriate, though, to make comment until the minutes are adopted and accepted? Right. That, that would be well, that, that is another point. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and if I, if I may, minutes are a very different thing than the video, right? So if we're just hitting highlight topics that were covered in the video, we're not saying anything about how anybody voted, we're not saying anything about anything else. Uh, we're giving them the opportunity to use the media that's already available to them um, okay. All right. in a positive Manion, way. Do you want yeah, to and I think that addresses yeah. a concern that I have from um, administration is the way the information would be drafted. Because if you don't give, if you just say this is what we did, back down. then mm -hmm. you're going to get a flood of, well, why didn't you think about this, or why didn't you, mm -hmm. why did you do this, right? Mm -hmm. So to sort of eliminate that, I think it's important to say, this is what we discussed, this is the wh what we discussed around it, and this was the decision. So giving the public the information so that they're not questioning the decision, if you give them the rationale for the decision, mm -hmm. and maybe just yeah. the link to the video is sufficient. Yeah. But how the message goes yeah. out is just as important as the message itself. Yeah. I, I agree with Marion. And just to give you an idea, Bill 28 
was a flop because there was no background there and no understanding as why that came to be exactly what Marion was talking about. So when you make a resolution or a decision, uh, people should know a little bit about the background, what we discussed and why we, we chose to have the motion uh, how, be carried that way or that way. Mm -hmm. Mayor, how soon afterwards is the video of council available online? It's about it's Thursday, Thursday. Thursday. Thursday? The Thursday after? Okay. Yeah. So I, I would think that something going out the Friday or the following Monday would be soon enough. Soon enough because you're not going to have any links to be able to put it into okay. that point. Okay. So let's, let's, let's make a little bit of the decision here. Uh, if I may, we, we discussed this exact thing in our recent chamber board meeting, Chamber of Commerce. The chamber board, the chamber members are all complaining they don't have enough access to what the chamber board is doing. And we said, you know, we can't keep waiting, you know, a month or two till the minutes of, you know, July got approved and then here you go, the minutes of July, it's all obsolete. Okay. So we, uh, we decided, and this is just what we decided at the chamber board just a couple days ago, that the minutes would be drafted up right after the meeting. And they would be sent out to the membership and uh, they would be approved within a, a day of them happening. And then as soon as the minutes were approved, we could release them to the membership yeah. literally within 24 hours instead of within 30 days. Yeah, that's the Chamber of Commerce maybe with less items that we have here on the agenda. I don't know that administration I, could work with that Well, I think framework. it's appropriate to put out press releases. I'm not sure it's appropriate to distribute them in. I wouldn't want yeah. to get email approvals on minutes. No, no, yeah, no, no, that needs to be done. Yeah. Okay, so let's make a decision here. Number one, are we okay with having a mayor's letter? Mm -hmm. How often? Once a month, twice a month? If we're going to do it as a mayor's letter, I think once a month is plenty. Once a month. How do you feel? It's fine with me, uh, regardless. I could do it twice a month, but I don't mind writing. Mm -hmm. But some of you might not like writing. <laughs> just, just a comment. I, I, I think. Council Barf says a wonderful idea, and I think it'd be a good start to do it at least once. It's kind of a trial balloon out there to see how okay. the public respond right. to it. And once a month would be, I think, would be okay. a good start. Let's start once a month. Now, there is a question of media attachment. Are we going to put the link to the media sure. in that I, I think that's the more effective way yeah. to do it. Okay, so we need to have the media attached to it. Uh, Thirdly, who is going to volunteer to start the process? Councillor Balfour? I'm happy to start the process. Fine. Mm -hmm. Who is going to do it next? And do you want to do it for one month and we change every month? Let's just go in the order of... Uh... We'll start with Tim and work our way around. Either that or alphabetical order. Do do you want to do it in alphabetical order to be exactly the way we're doing it with the deputy mayor? I wasn't sure. Would work? I don't Councillor Barnes, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that, that, that's one of the other things, too, is if, if you don't feel comfortable writing or putting that together. Let us know. Yeah, I don't think this should be an obligation. It should be something you feel comfortable doing. Yeah, okay. I got too much to Man, uh, just to maybe that. here's a suggestion because. Um, Maybe you want to go by deputy mayor assignment. Yes. So it's, it's, easier. it's hard to shift it up every month. It's like, oh, whose turn is it now? Yeah. But if you're the deputy mayor, you'll do it for the eight months, and then it'll be the Great deputy idea. mayor's yeah. turn. Yeah. Okay. Does that sound yeah. Is that sure. is that fine? Thank you. <laughs> All right. Good. Thank you very much. It was a good conversation. Uh, mayor, my, my next part to that, the, the first part of that, though, is, is that we need to start creating that email database. Yes. Right. So that was the We, a, we have nice that part. option on our website right now. Good. Okay. That they can sign up to receive emails. Fantastic. Good. Okay. Then, and then thank you. You need to re reflect that in your first, in right. your first Absolutely. communication. Okay. Yeah. Um, and we need to advertise that somewhere. So it'll be yeah. all over the place. If I may. That's what people. Councilor Barf has a question. Would it be beneficial to the email list you have already compiled to? Email them and I, encourage that's them exactly to go. what I would do. That yeah. email, I'll, I'll send an email out to those people saying, "Go to the town website. I'll get the link there. I'll put that in the email I sent out. 
register for the town. You know. Okay, my, my only concern is as follows. If there are some concerns, who is going to answer the email? I think the main responses. Oh, that's all. Oh, no, no, no. I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm happy to help. The, but it has to be a position of council. It right? does. It, it yeah, cannot it, be just it be somebody going, doing it. Right? Yeah. Um, Jeff just had a suggestion. If it's not something that possibly we could answer very simply from administration, we would bring it to the council agenda. Good. As as per our policy, as per our policy, so we will follow policy. Yeah, but if it's, if it's written appropriately yeah. with the why, then I think you're going to see very few questions because mm -hmm. you've see, already you've already you exposed the rationale for your decision. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, fine. Thank you so much. It was a yeah. brilliant conversation. Thank um, you. If I may, so the uh, the responses that are coming back to us, do they get a little? Hey, that's a great question. We're going to bring it up to the council, like an immediate response. Oh yes, of yeah. course, of course, we would respond. Yeah. Great. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, we moved them on. Pretty good. Okay, seven C. Ask alternate committee assignment. I have asked Councillor Pivoy to stand in for Councillor Edmonds, who is assigned to Ask. Uh, because OSC has a policy that if the member is replaced by another councillor, unless that one is on the list, he can't vote. So to alleviate that problem and not have a voice at the table after the person has done all that traveling, uh, I assign councillor Pivoy to that. We need to have a, a motion for that. So. Uh, who has not done any motion today? <laughs> Con Councillor Creed uh, makes a motion that uh, Councillor Pivot be assigned as the alternate committee member for OSC. Uh, yeah, having made the motion, just, I assume <laughs> that you, you that Councillor Pivot is all, all, all yeah, okay with, with his time Excited. commitments? To, Excited. To okay. I, I spoke with him. Okay, Thank you. That's, uh, that's, good. <laughs> that's good. Keep me on my toes. No surprises. <laughs> yeah. All in favor? Uh, all in favor? Okay. Thank you. Now, 7D is uh, the bylaw uh, 1606C that has to do with electricity distribution bylaw. And it is the uh, proposal, it's in reaction to the proposal of 40s to increase the transmission rates and the distribution rates. Uh, and uh, one needs to understand that we cannot change that decision. It is a Fortis decision, it is not a town decision. And uh, just mm -hmm. let me finish, I'll be there. Uh, Fortis has to apply to the Alberta Utility uh, Commission and to get approval for those rates and that approval can only come after the due diligence proving that that rate is needed to uh, carry on their work with transmission lines and distribution. Marion is going to talk to us as to the impact on the resident, on the light and the medium uh, commercial. It has an impact and she will address us. And if you take the little sheet she distributed to, for you, yeah. you will see uh, an average change per month on your bill. Thank you, Mayor. Yes, Cronin. Is this my time? You can hear me okay? Yes. Um, as Mayor Cronin stated, this is in response to the notice that we received from Fortis that they have put an application into the Alberta Utilities Commission for an increase to their transmission and distribution charges. That what happens is, um, because the town of Cardston owns our own electrical distribution system, we have to actually pay to Fortis for, we don't pay for the energy, we just pay for the ability for the energy to come from the generator to us through the Fortis lines. And so this is what the, the rate impact is. Um, we, we have tried in the last couple of years to ensure that that rate that is charged to us by Fortis is a direct flow through to the utility user. Um, 
as I had said earlier, we only have three sources of revenue, really. We have our utilities, we have grants, which do not work for electrical, and we have user fees, which is, uh, and then taxes. Okay, so user fees, utilities are sort of the same type of revenue. Um, so, in response to the notice from Fortis that they had made application for an increase to the utilities, I had our consultant, Kevin Phillips, do an analysis of the projected rate, the, the impact to us, and what that would do to our rates. And so these rates are what is in front of you in the bylaw. I just, um, tonight, what we're looking for is first reading of the bylaw, and what that does is just puts the bylaw on the table for discussion. Um, it in no way is enforcing the bylaw at that point. We will advertise for December 10th council meeting, now that you've decided what the date is, to hold a public hearing at that time where citizens can come and talk to council about their concerns or uh, have questions about the bylaw itself. At that time, I've spoken with the mayor. I will have Kevin Phillips, who is our expert in this field, I will have him attend the public hearing so that he can speak to council about the details of, of the impact of this rate and how he determined this uh, level of increase for us. Um, as we spoke at the last meeting, I believe the, the percentage increase um, that Kevin had projected was substantially, while well, Fortis's increase and Kevin's increase were substantially different from each other. And if you remember, it's because when Fortis is doing their uh, analysis, the energy side of it as well, where we're just looking strictly at distribution and transmission. So what I have Kevin do for you is um, create this typical monthly bill calculation. So if you look at February of 2014, when we're projecting to um, have this rate increase take effect, on a typical residential bill, now typical would mean X amount of kilowatt hours, and he's taken an average of all residential users and looked at what would be a typical use. Um, so the impact for our proposed rate would be $5.82 on a typical bill per month, or what works out to 11.8%. Um, Again, the, the rate impact to us averages about 25% if you look at that, but when you calculate all of the components into the rate, it actually only will show about 11.8% increase on the uh, residential. I shouldn't say only, but compared to 25, right. it's substantially less. Um, on the small commercial, which would be the majority of businesses in our community, um, it would, on a typical bill, now, some will be lower, some will be higher, but $47.51, which is a percentage change of 14.4%. The medium commercial has the biggest impact, and there's a little bit of rationale behind this. When we were establishing rates with council a few years ago, when we looked at having a full cost recovery, um, one of the things we talked about was um, the larger users and the impact that they have. And so your medium commercial is actually the highest users that we have in our community. And um, the majority of those businesses are also not taxpayers. Uh, we have 14 medium commercial utility users at the current time, and only four of those are businesses. The rest are all institutional, including the town of Cardston. Um, so the impact on those bills is a 16.2% increase, but because they're larger users, the dollar amount is larger. So on a typical bill, um, that would be $572.31. Um, it's a lot to kind of digest, I guess. Um, like I said, I will invite Kevin to the December 10th meeting so that he can better explain to you how those rates are, are um, the, the composite of the rates and, and how he's come to his estimates for us. Thank you. Councillor uh, So I'm assuming, and I'm just verifying here, these previous years, this is an accurate rate increase anyway? From I mean, it looks like uh, just on the residential, 19% yes. yes. in 2011 it went up. 
7% in 2012 and 19 again in 2013. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. this year's increase will be smaller than last year's. Smaller than last year, correct. And the reason for that is because, as you know, the electrical uh, rates across the province have been changing uh, over the years. And in 2011, we had to do a bit of a catch up. Um, in 2012, council chose at that time to kind of lessen the impact on the user, the citizens. And so in turn, in 2013, we had to play again a little bit of a catch up. So we put a transmission rider on, and the rider is there to help us react uh, to any quarterly increases that might be um, awarded through AUC to, to the utility company. Um, just, I really want to clarify, this is strictly in reaction to our increase in Fortis costs. It is not intended to have any additional revenue for our own distribution system. It is in reaction to a direct cost that we're facing. And it covers, it covers what we would have to expect. Yeah, and, and with Fortis making the application to AUC, all Fortis customers will see the change in the rate, right? Councillor Van I hate to throw a camera into the spokes, but how are we determining home-based businesses for their electrical charge? They don't pay a business residential charge. Residential. It's just a residential calculation. We do have a couple of um, uh, businesses that are in the residential area that have a split. They might have two meters, so they might have a commercial and a residential meter. But if they only have a residential meter, they're charged at the residential rate. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, Marion, I just wanted to understand, uh, so Fortis has made the application to AUC. Correct. It, it, has, it has been approved, hasn't been approved? It has not been approved, but they yes. anticipate it will be approved before the end of the year. So, our, our rider, does it uh, basically just take effect if, if that rate is approved? Well, if, yeah, if there was a change to that rate, mm -hmm. or if it was not approved, then we would come back to you with an amended bylaw. But we have to be prepared because it takes time, it takes you know, days. to get the bylaw passed mm -hmm. and then to also give our utility uh, provider, our billing provider, the opportunity to get the changes put into the system. Mm -hmm. So we have to be prepared a bit here to anticipate a January 1st implementation. We're, we're seeing February 1st implementation, but we anticipate Fortis will have a January 1st implementation. So, yeah. is there any way, there's no way that we can, we can make that rider a floating figure no. so that it no. moves with the Fortis rates? No, that's the purpose, but we would still have to pass the bylaw on a, we could do it on a quarterly basis, but we have to give at least uh, 45 days notice of the rate change to the, the billing provider. Mm. And so um, that's not something I think you want to do on, on a, every 45 days, right? Mm. Unless it's a drastic change. Mm -hmm. But if, if there wasn't an increase coming from Fortis, then we would adjust these figures because our costs, our distribution access tariff would be redu reduced accordingly as well. So we would definitely bring that back to council. It's not intended that we would have a slush fund if those rates aren't. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify in my mind that transmission rider, is that the town? Does no. that come in to, no, to the, the town No, the transmission coffers? base charge is the, that's kind of the set amount that Kevin is confident that's going to be charged. Mm -hmm. Fortis will have riders on theirs. I see. So, so he's tried to adopt a rider within our rates as well which is more easily managed than looking at the base charge. And it's because it's a very complex formula to get, um, to get those rates established. And so if he, can, if he can use a rider portion, it helps him respond to the market better. Right. Yeah. So another secondary question. Um, if and when we get this adopted and, and uh, taken care of, done, how do we respond to the public? We we have to be able to tell them this isn't our doing. This, this is, is what this you is say. something from Fortis. <laughs> <laughs> this is not be up to the council. We just need to be able to tell them. Part of the, 
tells her purpose and that's going to be in your ten grade letter. <laughs> that uh, in the letter uh, from mayor and council yep. would be a very good thing to yeah. express that. Well, yeah, yeah I think that's one of the um, valuable points of doing a monthly letter is, is, and what I said was why. You know, we discussed electrical distribution and transmission rates. Why? Because we got this right. notice. So notice. we have no control you know, over it. I, I think that Andrew communication with the public is critical, and that's yeah. why I'm really trying to emphasize this is not that the town of Cardston is trying to receive Increase more revenue rates. through yeah. their electrical exactly. distribution. We are simply passing through costs. All right. So, one more motion. question? Wait, yeah. Are you ready for that? You wanted a question? Oh, no, I'll, I'll, make the, I'll make the motion for okay. first reading for uh, the electrical distribution bylaw. All right, uh, so first reading for the bylaw 1606C to um, change or to approve the electricity distribution, right. uh, transmission and distribution. Charges. Okay. Did you get that? Perfect. Mm -hmm. Any questions? No. All in favor? Thank you. First reading. Then will be public here. Public hearing December the tenth. Public hearing December tenth. That's right. six o'clock. Can we not do second reading now? No. No. Uh, it's best if we let second and third come after the <coughs> hearing. It would be better. The first is there to tell us that we acknowledge that we need to do something and we want a little better reaction. Okay, eight is a financial report. Um, if you have any question, please bring it forward. Uh, Marion has and her staff has reverted to the old model of reporting, which is no longer monthly. It is on an annual base, full budget versus actual. It's no longer the monthly. The monthly breakdown was extremely confusing and actually didn't serve too much of a purpose. This is more interesting as a format and it has the explanation for the changes and the variance. So if you have any particular questions, in the expenses, the only thing I can maybe uh, show you or let you understand, when it comes to park and recreation, also very large figure that you see. Page one. Uh, I don't have the page here. Page three. Page three. The expenses. Okay. Uh, all those are hill damage, essentially. So those large figures that you can see at that point on the park and recreation are really hill damages that were covered through insurance. Yeah. Yeah, um, you'll see in 2014's budget that these full budget amounts will be less, and it's because in 2013 we had to budget for those hail damage repairs which were paid by insurance. All right. And uh, in a capital, a capital expenditure, if you see a large variance, that goes also uh, it's explained by the fact that projects are in progress and the billing will come later on. Okay? So I need a motion to approve the financial statement of the Councillor uh, Pampas. Approve the financial statement of September 30th, 2013. Thank you. One question before we question? Go ahead. On, uh, this is just for my, my copy, but under uh, expenses uh, on the first page, uh, economic development, the, the hole is punched. Oh, yeah. Uh, right where, okay. <laughs> where, where the figure was. Check, can they give us a figure? <laughs> on what page, sorry? It's on the, There's the, no the first page. Page the, where expenses start after total revenue, just the first oh, page. Right there, the bottom. Uh, three hundred forty-five thousand four hundred. Yeah, all I got is the four hundred. So okay, three hundred forty-five thousand. Which page is that? This one. It's the, it's the expense. Just, it's just use your imagination. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thank you. Program. I just wondered where it was. That's <laughs> fine. What is that again? Three hundred forty-five thousand four hundred. Three hundred forty-five thousand four hundred. I just thought it was important. Yeah. As as a first. Thank you. Thanks. All right. 
All right. Um, Mayor Cronin. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we need a vote on that. We didn't vote. No. no. Sorry. Go. Okay. Question. All in favor? Thank you. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. So let's go on to item 9. 9A is a town council motion list for your information. Unless you have questions. No questions. 9B is a bylaw enforcement animal control report for October 2013. You would uh, want to take the amended sheet here, so would have to be approved. Just we'll have it just information. like this for all information. Yeah. Just on the one that was in the agenda package, we didn't have resolved or pending numbers on okay. there, so okay. it just shows the files. All right. So you can see that the cats and dogs and the skunks and are still occupying an awful lot of time <laughs> of our uh, peace officer. Uh, it's a little uh, uh, amusing, but not so amusing that if we were not looking after those cats and dogs, the phone would be running uh, at the town because kids would be mauled and people afraid of walking in the streets, etc. Well, one other thing I think we should yeah. point out to you is, you know, in October alone, there was 94 files that our bylaw officer, peace officer, was dealing with. So he's kept pretty busy on a regular basis. And and as the mayor said, the majority of those are still animal complaints, mm -hmm. which is yeah. interesting. And then there are the unsightly premises. And every month, you will see in your report that there are some files that have been resolved regarding that. I know some of you would feel that we should clean up a little quicker, well, it takes time, but we're getting there, okay? What, uh, just a question there on that, on Sunday property, what, what remedies are there? What do, what do we do well, if it carries on? If it carries on, um, what we have to do is actually take them to court, and then we get a court order that we can go on the premises and clean up and then charge that against their tax. That's we don't like to go so to that. So as the mayor said, it's a very lengthy process, yeah. and you have to be. Everyone has a right to their property as well, so yeah. it's a bit of a delicate situation as well. Right? Yeah. yeah. I just have to say that Lloyd is very good uh, at, at, at communicating with people, and uh, you know, giving them, you know, time and giving them warnings, and, mm -hmm. and, and uh, you know, I, I think Lloyd does an excellent job in uh, dealing with with these things. Thank you. Uh, I have a question for maybe administration or Lloyd, maybe we need to ask him. Uh, I'm just curious if there's like a recurring frivolous call that he gets that perhaps a uh, media release from us can kind of say, hey, in this situation, please stop calling Lloyd. Uh, or <laughs> try this first. Try this can, first. Can we shut off the camera before we get this? <laughs> well, I'm just saying, you know, like some people don't know the appropriate, you know, steps to take. They just call Lloyd first, you know, and... Uh, uh, if I might speak to that. Um, yes, we get frivolous calls. We, as the town, become a lot of things to a lot of citizens, and we try to be as accommodating as possible. We're everything from, um, you know, the phone directory to whatever. Referee. Referees, yeah. <laughs> so we do try to be accommodating but we also try to inform the citizens that perhaps this is a better way to deal with it. So, um, so just per case by case, you're giving some yeah. suggestions. Yeah, we, do, we deal with it as we receive okay. it. But again, you know, for us to, for instance, if someone phones looking for a phone number, we can give that number just as quickly as we can say, phone tell us. <laughs> right. so, we and I must say the office is excellent at providing that service. <laughs> if I may then, just to throw it out there, uh, if, if it, you deem it necessary that maybe some media release from us would be beneficial in that kind of communication, uh, you know, bring it to our attention. Yeah, what, what your idea of a frivolous phone call is totally different it's major than to them. What, the, what their idea is. Yeah. <laughs> if we saw a problem, we would yeah, I mean, 
sometimes uh, Lloyd uh, deals also with repeat offender with the same dog, the same cat, yeah, and, and yeah. that's a problem. You know, I mean, if people were taking a little bit more responsibility uh, to follow our bylaws, it would be easier. But it's not always the way it goes. And, and he has to that. shut off his phone occasionally too, because you know mm -hmm. he he shouldn't have to be called out at midnight because somebody's dog's barking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, I mean, really, right? So we try and protect the employees from those types of things as well. So it's. it's the animal is still what's taking most of his time, but it is. And if it was not, if he was not taking the time, people will be ringing uh, at the office and trying to get the problem solved. And so it's, it's difficult for him to balance everything. Yeah. Back, just, um, back in the day when uh, Ted King was on council, I don't know if you were here at the time, there, but I remember him talking to me, there was no bylaw officer at the time and he told me that his phone was ringing off the wall day in day out he was the man who was in charge of the dogs <laughs> and uh, i'm glad we have a bylaw lloyd's doing a fabulous job there's no question he's doing a fabulous job well you may want to convey yeah. the Same. appreciation to from council thank you because i sure would want to have him call me all just, right just Nine. one question if I go ahead that. um when it says removed on the report what does that mean on which on oh, the animals, on yeah, the animals. Um, most of those are adopted by um, organizations Shelter. outside of our community. So removed from our community? Yes. So it's, okay. yes. But he so actually it's has adopted a no-kill policy. Right. So um, it's, most of those would have been adopted. Or occasionally we'll have an adoption in town, but very, very few. Most of them are going in town. Thank yeah. you. Further to that question then, if we have this adoption agency for animals, is this council supporting that financially in some way? Because there has to be money involved there. You know, when you when you move an animal out, is there is you know they they vaccinate them, they spay uh, them, yeah, and uh, spay them and things like that. Well. There is have, they asked, have they asked this council for support? We actually do support that organization yeah. in, a, in a few different ways. Um, one of the things they do is they've done an annual spay-neuter program, and we've they've donated, donated the facility for that. Um, it's usually a three-day event. Last year they had it at the Ice Center. They, it worked very well. So they've actually booked two different events for one in the spring and one in the fall next year as well. So we help them in as many ways as we can, not necessarily financially, with a cash donation. Yeah. Provide a place for them. To do yeah, it. right. They're also doing that program on a reserve on Moses yeah. Lake too. That's the one that they yeah. do the spay neutering and. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Now nine C Alberta transportation briefing. This is a lengthy briefing that uh, <coughs> Jeff has put together for us. We are going to. We are going to go at the UMA. We are going to meet with the staff of Alberta Transportation regarding the access to Highway 5 to the West Industrial Area. As you know, up to now, we have not been able to get their cooperation. And there are a few problems attached to that. One is the uh, the problem with the change of speed uh, in that area. So the question is, should the town pursue the changes to the Gazette speed limits in this area and uh, await approval in principle prior to spending the money on design of the access? So what's your opinion on this one? Uh, Mary, what do you want to speak to that? Yeah, what these questions are for actually is questions that um, should be asked of Alberta Transportation right. when we meet with them, right? Um, we'll maybe have Jeff just give you a quick briefing okay. so Thank you have you. a little more background. Right. He's done a good job here. But. Um, when I thought about briefing council on this, I think, I think where 
and maybe it's unfortunate the minister won't be here because we kind of need a little bit of political help in moving this project forward at this point in time. The issue I've run into with transportation, um, bureaucratically, is that their, their preference would be for us to go spend a lot of money to do design proposals and design schematics and, and literally spend tens of thousands of dollars and then hope they're happy with it. And then hope it works and hope we can change the speed limit. And I've been really hesitant to go, well, obviously I haven't had money to do it, but I've been hesitant to try and entertain going and spending ten or fifteen or twenty thousand dollars in hopes that when it's all said and done it'll even be entertained. Because what I'm hearing from the staff, the Lethbridge area, is that it may not be an area that the province will consider changing the speed limit. And the reason is they don't feel that it's enforceable. They, they kind of go on a rule that if they feel 90% of the people won't obey the speed limit that's posted, they're not going to change the speed limit. And this would move it to 50 kilometers an hour all the way out to almost the cemetery road. And that's a long way out of town. And they're concerned that it's not enforceable, so maybe they would never make the recommendation to do it. So again, I'm, I'm sitting here saying, do I go hire an engineer to design the accesses, design the road, design the drainage, and design all that and cost the project if I don't even know if we can get the speed limit changed? So that, that's where the, the gazetted speed limit question comes up, is, is there an appetite to even change it? Because if not, I'm, I don't think we should spend much. And the point is already transportation participating. Yeah. You know, yeah. There's a it's, it's, it's a highway, too. right? Mm -hmm. So should they be participating financially in that yeah. access? And, and that's been the debate. When, when this, and the previous councillors will remember, when we first started going down this road, again, pun intended, <laughs> um, <laughs> keep using road analogies in my discussion. Um, you know, we went to transportation, and their initial position was, if it's development driven, we have nothing to do with it. Design, construction, nothing. It's all yours. Go hire an engineer, pay a whole bunch of money, you do it, we, we won't touch it. But it wasn't that cut and dry, because we do require a lot of regulatory and provincial approvals before it can happen. We, we can't just be that separate. I did meet with Associated Engineering, they have a roads specialist, and they of course would be happy to offer their services, <laughs> and they do a great job, I don't have any doubt about that. But it comes with significant dollars attached to start doing um, access schematics off of highways because we were looking at options of putting in the service road all the way through then transportation said no we don't like how you would bulb that you don't you don't have enough land anymore you got Baird's house on the west side so we're not happy with that so when like I said in the briefing when Brandon and I went and met with transportation when we left my understanding was they were going to say look here's some options here's some things we think you can do that would work and when I followed up, it was, well, get some designs and send them to us, and we'll tell you if it'll work. But for a small municipality like us, that costs a lot of money. And I, I just wish that I could get a little bit more um, guidance as to what that looks like. Um, I don't know that it's reasonable to expect us to, to have thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 worth of design fees on one access off of a highway before we even know if it's viable. I'm concerned about that. I'm looking for some help from transportation. And then they also told us that the cost of construction would be entirely on the backs yeah. of the municipality. And, th and that was twinning the highway to four lanes all the way to the yeah. cemetery. Mm -hmm. My position's been, look, it, it's kind of twinned halfway there anyway, because then it, it merges in. And I agree with them completely. Right where we would want the access is right where it goes from four lanes to two. It, that's a bad spot. And I totally agree. But, you know, I've even asked if, if there's a capital plan for the highway in the future, that we can look to to participate, but they'd be doing work on it anyway, repaving or something. And could we bring all the fill? Could we get it to grades and they'd do the asphalt? And I, I don't have any clear direction on any of those kind of participation areas. Um, uh, where, what responsibility is the person who's doing a proposed development in this? This is a business venture, I assume. We yeah. don't know what I don't know what it is yet, but. Where is their participation on this, yeah. as far as the finances yeah, of this expense? Their position is they are willing to come in and pay a pretty good dollar for the land, provided they have an access to get into it. They're anticipating that we're providing accessible commercial land. 
That's their position. They don't feel they should have to build the access. The whole road. Yeah. The whole road because they're willing to take care of everything on the interior once the access all happens. The infrastructure. They'll take care of, well, they would take care of all of the parking and roadways and everything on their parcel. But they're saying we need some way to access the parcel first. And, and they feel, and probably rightfully so, that the onus for that is on the town because the access would, in theory, open up about 14 or 15 lots on that interior <coughs> of the highway. What about the, the, the sewers, the storm sewers? And yeah, we have considered that, and the previous council would remember, we considered we would put all that in, but the price that we told them the land would be worth reflected um, cost recovery. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's going to be cost recovery, yeah. that's right. Okay. Thank you. I'm in the dark of where this land is and why they have to have a highway access. Is you, do we not have an access road going south of the uh, home building place but it dead ends right down right so this land is from the western boundary of the home of mount view industries right to the western boundary of town which would be the east boundary of, of bears yeah, right. <coughs> they want second avenue they want high traffic highway access they don't want have to go around down to 12 up second come in the back they want they want to be a high visibility business that draws people off the road that needs high traffic highway access. And it's very frustrating because if you remember reading uh, Doug Griffith's book, uh, municipalities of our size need to have attract businesses, Absolutely. but on the other hand. We have all those roadblocks and terrible capital expenditure to swallow up. So in one way we are asked to be sustainable, on the other hand we are told it's going to be difficult. So how do we bridge those two, uh, bringing those two ministries together, that's what I would love to see. Is, is there any kind of grants available for this type of thing? That we can no. look into. Our basic municipal I mean, transportation grant is two hundred thousand approximately, so it's not even going to come close to not even covering the cost of that. No. I mean, council could allocate MSI grant transportation yeah. grant if that was the, at, the the priority at the expense of everything else we use it on. Um, yeah. So with this road in there. We have a potential of selling what? About another 50 or 17, 17 lots? About. 14, there's 14, a few 14, more than 14, that. 14, no. No, sorry. Oh, I guess I have the map right here. Sorry, I'm <laughs> seeing your background. So, the, when we first looked at this West Industrial Project, and this goes back about five years, we looked at putting the service road in from east to west. Right. And so, that was kind of the first hurdle, even prior to this person wanting this land, is that. Alberta Transportation does not like the service road that we have, say, in front of K&D. Because a vehicle cannot stage on 12th before it has to go on the highway. There, there's only 15 yards there. So they're, they're kind of turned in the wrong lane, and they've got to go out into incoming traffic to get all the way around. And I get that completely, and I understand that. So they're saying, we want to see your, your service roads. In this case, it would come to the south and then bulb back out into either the cemetery road or 12th Street. Well, that would go right through Baird's backyard. And I don't know if that's a reasonable expectation. And we also don't own enough land in the road allowance to do the bulbing either. We'd have to purchase that, which is probably doable. Um, so when we, then we looked and said, what if we put an access right between those two parcels and then move the road so it went right through the entire industrial area? So the access came off and then, and then each side of that road allowance became the boundary of the private property on both sides and you could shoot straight south all the way to our southern boundary in that parcel and access the industrial lots on both sides. And that's where we have it right now. That was, um, that was an agreeable access by the potential purchaser too. We, we looked at options like running the service road all the way, coming off of 12, bulbing appropriately, and then running into a basically a dead end on the west side. So having a huge bulb turnaround in there, and then they'd have to come all the way back out and back up to 12. Um, this purchaser wasn't interested in that, and we had to put some weight in that because we were basically using their purchase dollars to fund the construction. 
Yes. So you, there was kind of a duty to try and accommodate there as best we could, because what they would pay for the land would essentially help us pay for the road, and the sewer, sewer and electrical and water. So this was an amicable agreement, and yeah, there, there's a lot going here. So Jeff, the developer was not opposed to putting that service road right sure. through. If it went all the way through and came out at the cemetery road and at 12. But it can't. It can't go out at the cemetery. But there's no way it can come out on the cemetery. No. Well, it'd go through Baird's yard. It, the bulbing would literally probably almost touch their house. Oh, it, yeah, it's far too encroaching. Far too encroaching. Yeah. And the other thing to remember is transportation doesn't like accesses off the highways at the best of times. Right. So to create a new one only so many meters from the cemetery road and 12th street, you're, you're sending a lot of traffic out into a highway in close proximity. And, and they get antsy about that. At the end of the day, I understand transportation's position in a lot of this. If it's development driven, why should they pay for it? U.S. Council would say the same thing if someone came in and wanted to do some development, say in a residential area. That's, that's been the position. I, I get it. This one, though, we, we've come into a project that's getting pretty complex and a little bit beyond our scope to accommodate. And that's why my last question there is, if you go through Claire's home now, you know it's yes. 70 all the way through yes. for a while, and they've built a service road and some accesses, and I, I, don't, I don't quite know the nature of that whole partnership either. And that might be something they could shed some light on, as I was thinking about questions for them. So essentially, in this meeting today, we're granting our approval that this letter be sent? Or no, we no, no, we're, meet, we're meeting with the... We are meeting face-to-face with, face with right, the right. staff. When that gives them. you the background uh, in order to ask the questions that are here. Gotcha. To try to see if we can get some better answers than what we heard up to now that we don't want. So, Mayor, with Jeff in mind, Jeff, there's no way we could put a service road farther south down by Draper's property. You could, but it doesn't accommodate what this purchaser's looking yeah. for. So we couldn't go in, in and, and curve it off to the. They they really they need, need the highway. highway access. Yeah, the nature of their business is you got to be able to pull off the highway immediately into their property. That's what they're looking for. Okay. Yeah. I, we need to take a little break at this point. Okay. We need a motion to move to adjourn and a break for the recess. Five minutes. 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 Five minutes.